இப்பதான் நீட்டா பஸ்ட் ஒரே ஒரு தாக்குறாங்க சாப்பாடெல்லாம் போட்டுக்கணியா
So good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello. Good evening, sir. Yeah. So can we start the class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we'll go ahead. So last class, if I'm right, we had discussed about the the activity of photosynthesis, right? We understood about light reaction, dark reaction, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So let us try to understand today next nutrition in amoeba. So life process, just a minute. Hope my voice is clear. Yes, sir. Should I use mic? So let's try to understand today about nutrition in amoeba. I request everyone to kindly enable your videos. It will be much easy for us to interact when you have enabled your video. Fine. I will not repeat it again and again, but it is my duty to tell you, please enable your videos. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's try to understand how nutrition in amoeba is going to take place. So with respect to this nutrition in amoeba, so as you all know, amoeba is unicellular. So the amoeba is a unicellular organism. Everybody agree with this? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. So being a unicellular organism, it is also eukaryotic. What do you mean by eukaryotic? A cell which is going to have a specific nucleus with a nuclear membrane is what we call it as eukaryotic cell. So it is unicellular in nature and also it is eukaryotic. Now this particular amoeba is considered to be as showing holozoic nutrition. So amoeba is going to show holozoic nutrition. So what is holozoic nutrition? It is dependent on some other organism for the food. So that is what we call it as holozoic. So why it is holozoic? Because amoeba being a protozoan, it is not having chlorophyll pigmentation. So if it was having chlorophyll pigmentation, it would have shown this, the activity of autotropic mode of nutrition. But here it is showing heterotropic mode of nutrition. Under that, it is showing holozoic mode of nutrition. So in this holozoic nutrition, what is going to happen is, let's draw a diagram of amoeba. Now amoeba, this is the structure of amoeba. So amoeba is shapeless. So you're able to see a nucleus. And all the cell organelles are also present. So this is the amoeba. Now amoeba, you all know that it is going to have 
one locomotory structure. What is the locomotory structure of amoeba? Anybody can tell me. I'm waiting. Pseudopodia. Very good. So pseudopodia is what we call it as the locomotory structure of amoeba. Now what will happen here is when uh, there is a foot particle. Now assume that there is some food particle near this amoeba. So this I have taken it as food particle. So whenever there is a food particle, what it is going to do is the pseudopodia is going to encircle this part of the food. So it's going to encircle this. So it's coming like this. And it is trying to drag that food inside the body. So once it drags that food inside the body, amoeba will open. So what has happened? Here there is a nucleus. Along with that, now you are able to see the food molecule. So this is the food molecule. And the food molecule is going to be covered by one vacuole, which we call it as food vacuole. So there is formation of the food vacuole. So it is going to drag that food, digest that food, means it is going to ingest that food. After ingesting that food, the digestion activity of the food molecule takes place in the food vacuole. After the digestion takes place, the food is going to be transported inside the cell itself for all the cell organelles and the undigested food molecules, whatever is there, that is going to be coming out of the body. Okay, through the cell membrane, the undigested food molecules comes out of the cell and that's how it is going to show holozoic nutrition. Is that clear to everybody? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Can I make a few points about this nutrition in amoeba? Write down. Amoeba is going to show holozoic nutrition. Holozoic nutrition. Okay. And it tries to eat, it tries to eat tiny particles of plants. It tries to eat tiny particles of plant and animal. Tiny particles of plant and animal as food, as food which floats, which floats on water which floats on water. Okay. Next. Amoeba. Amoeba ingests the food. Ingests. Ingests the food. Ingests the food with the help of pseudopodia. With the help of pseudopodia. Pseudopodia spelling and write it. Pseudopodia is the spelling here. Yeah the help of pseudopodia. Next point. The ingestion of food. The ingestion of food in amoeba in amoeba is termed as is termed as Phagocytosis is termed as 
phagocytosis. Elro Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. By phagocytosis. Next. The ingested food, the ingested food shows digestion. The ingested food shows digestion in food vacuole. Shows digestion in food vacuole. Shows digestion in food vacuole. Next point. The undigested food, the undigested food, the undigested food is thrown out of the body, is thrown out of the body by rupturing of the cell membrane by rupturing of cell membrane by rupturing of cell membrane okay is that clear yes sir yeah. yes sir so can you please sir. note down these two diagrams Yes or no? Baritira, please interact with me. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I done. I will done it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So now let's try to understand. Next. <clears throat> A very important concept that is nutrition in human. Okay. Hi. So you know, let's try to understand about this condition of nutrition in human beings. You, every one of you here know that human being is the most highly developed individual in the animal kingdom. Everybody agree with this point? Yes, sir. Yeah. So as he is a highly developed individual, his body is going to have an activity of digestive system which is complicated. The, re the reason for this is 
human being is not photoautotropic or chemoautotropic. He is heterotropic. And being heterotropic, he is considered to be as holozoic. So he's going to show holozoic mode of nutrition. So when he is showing holozoic mode of nutrition, the food, whatever he is going to take, it is a complex food. How the every one of you, whatever the food you consume every day, it's a complex food. How the every day we consume rice. Rice is called a starch. Or we consume ragi in the form of ragi ball. That is also consisting of starch. Then we consume chapati. Chapati is a type of wheat. Wheat is also starch. Everybody agree with this point? Yes, so sir. Yes. So this food, whatever we consume, is not in a position to be absorbed directly. And right? whatever you consume as starch cannot be absorbed to the human body cells as starch itself. It has to be broken down into simpler food molecules. So everybody agree with this. So for that reason, nutrition in human being has become a complex activity. The reason is digestive system is complex and the digestive system is going to have various types of enzymes and acids which are going to be secreted. And the types are chemical substances na body release martaide. Our release agiron to have chemical substances the food is digested. The food molecules in a simpler molecules agi break down So that entire thing we are going to understand now. So human beings the nutrition in human beings is going to have something that is very first. Elementary canal. So human body has something called as elementary canal. What is elementary canal? Elementary canal is basically a tube-like structure which starts from mouth, ends at anus. So elementary canal is going to be a tube which is starting from mouth ends with ends. So it's a long tube which is approximately around nine meters in length. It's a huge tube-like structure which is around nine meters in length. So you might be imagining human body there on the yard meter one meter. How is this nine meters present in the body? Yes, it is highly coiled structure. The elementary canal This is highly coiled structure. In order to write from classics or four, you would have been writing digestive system diagram. Small intestine, curves are coiled structures. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So that's why it is considered to be as a highly coiled structure. So that coiled structure is around nine meters in length, starting from mouth to anus. What are all the parts we are going to observe in between? Let's try to understand. So very first, it starts with mouth. So mouth is connected to esophagus. Hold up. Mouth is connected to esophagus, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. So then esophagus is connected to what? <clears throat> esophagus is connected to stomach. Stomach. Right? So esophagus is, stomach, is connected to stomach. Stomach is connected to? Intestine. What Small. intestine? What intestine? Small intestine. Small intestine. But it's connected to small intestine. So there is presence of small intestine. Okay. Now it's clear. So mouth is connected to esophagus. Esophagus is connected to stomach. Stomach is connected to small intestine. Everybody, let's try to understand. What are all present in case of small intestine? So small intestine is going to have different parts. Yeah, what are the parts of it? Parts of small intestine are 
डियोडियम जेजूनम एज वेल एज इलियम सो दीज आर द पार्ट ऑफ स्मॉल इंटरस्टेन डियोडियम जेजूनम इलियम इज दट फाइन एवरीबडी यस ओके सो देन here duodenum jejunum here yeah, small intestine small intestine is in turn connected to what large intestine hoga it's the more it's the small intestine is connected to large intestine so large intestine also will be having parts in it en <clears throat> enadu the parts of large intestine सीकम कोलन एज वेल एज रेक्टम सो दीज आर द पार्ट ऑफ दिस लार्ज इंटस्टाइन सो स्मॉल इंटस्टाइन हैज थ्री पार्ट ड्यूडिनम जजनम इलियम लार्ज इंटस्टाइन हैज सीकम कोलन रेक्टम ओके एंड देन द लार्ज इंटस्टाइन अल्टीमेटली इज कनेक्टेड टू वॉट एन एस so whatever we say as elementary canal mouth to anus which is around 9 meters in length has parts called as mouth esophagus stomach small intestine so that small intestine has three parts right duodenum jejunum ileum sorry i have made a small mistake here ileum spelling is just i l u of okay. ileum then large intestine is going to have three parts Cecum, colon, rectum. Lastly, large intestine is connected to ileum. So this is the flow chart of elementary canal. Clear, everybody? Yes. Please make yes, a note. Well, please make a note of this. Yes, sir. Shall I proceed ahead? Mundu ko kya? Yes, sir. so you all know we have understood the parts of the elementary canal now let us try to understand each one of it in a detail yen yen irutte anna artha maatha so we understood human digestive system is hollow means nutrition system is hollow so right? digestive system consists of elementary canal it's a long tube like structure connected from mouth to anus so you know let's go ahead to understand about the very first mouth so where is the presence of mouth mouth is present at the part of the face so here na girte mouth is a broad horizontal opening how da our mouth is a horizontal opening it's not vertical it is horizontal how da everybody agree with this point yes sir yes, yes. so this mouth is going to have Two parts. One we call it as upper lip. At the same time, we have lower lip. Okay, yes or no? So we are having upper lip, lower lip. 
So this upper and lower lip is going to open. So now whenever we are going to consume food, we are going to open our uh, mouth, which is consisting of upper and lower lip, and we are going to take the food inside. So when we take the food inside, what is that inside part called as? It is a cavity. So mouth is going to have a cavity which is called as buccal cavity. Okay. So mouth is going to have a cavity in it, which I call it as buccal cavity. Is that fine with everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you are not a buccal cavity. So buccal cavity will be having presence of <clears throat> very first upper jaw as well as we are able to see lower jaw. So there is presence of upper jaw, lower jaw, where in the buccal cavity. Then it is also going to have, buccal cavity is going to have three pairs of salivary glands. So there is presence of salivary glands. We will understand what are all the salivary glands. We will understand in the same chapter going ahead. Then along with this, buccal cavity also has tongue, which is going to help in tasting food. Hold on. Yes, sir. No? Yes, sir. So there is also another importance of this. We will try to understand each one of it. What is the importance? Here, buccal cavity has a low upper jaw, lower jaw. So we are able to see upper jaw here, lower jaw here. So upper jaw and lower jaw. Lower jaw is considered to be movable form. Now, when we are chewing the food, our upper jaw is stagnant. But lower jaw keeps moving upward, downward, upward, downward. How that? Agree, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So upper jaw and lower jaw put together, it is connected with a system which is called as teeth. How the upper jaw and lower jaw will be having presence of teeth in it. How the yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Then there are three pairs of salivary glands. Whenever we are consuming the food, the food gets mixed with saliva. Saliva is basically a fluid which keeps on uh, secreted by the buccal cavity. It keeps your buccal cavity almost, almost moist in condition. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So that is the important. So three pairs of salivary glands are secreting here saliva. It secretes saliva. So saliva the function now. It mixes with the food, makes the food as a soft component. A soft component, saliva. Every time, whenever you are going to consume the food, please just observe this. Every means you have to observe it. Whenever you take the food inside, the moment you take the food inside, the food gets mixed with saliva. It is getting mixed with the food. It makes the food soft. Oda, agree with this, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. After that, yes, once sir. it mixes with the saliva, there is presence of tongue. Tongue madate. It mixes the food and the saliva together, makes it as a ball-like structure. Food becomes ball-like structure, which we call it as bolus. It becomes as bolus. A bolus in the with the help of the tongue. So tongue with multiple functions there. One, it helps in tasting the food. The moment you take the food inside your buccal cavity, it comes in contact with the tongue and the tongue tells you the taste. It helps in tasting the food as a sweet, Sour, spicy, salty. Oda, agree? Everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Along with that, it also helps in mixing the food with the bowl, with the saliva, makes it as a round ball-like structure, which is called as bolus. At the same time, there is also another importance of tongue, even though tongue is considered to be as a thick muzzle, thick muzzle, which is going to help in the activity of vocabulary, whenever you are speaking, 
we are going to pronounce different words of different languages so every time whenever you are going to speak any particular language you require the tongue how the yes sir yes sir yes, sir you are going to roll your tongue in various angles touch your tip of the tongue to the hard pellet over the buccal cavity and you are going to pronounce the words so that idella martira alva you touch your tongue to the teeth you will touch your tongue to the pellet hard pellet melgade buccal cavity on the hard pellet irutte adanna touch martira so that is how you are able to pronounce different words in different languages whichever you are going to speak so that is the importance of the tongue okay adu onde function i to showing multiple function first function you know helps in tasting the food second it helps in making the food into bolus third it is going to help us in speaking means it gives us the capacity of speaking okay all this are the functions of the tongue so these are the parts of the buccal cavity artha aita idu anybody has any doubt in this no sir ನೋಡಿ ನಾನು ಯಾವ ತರ ಬರಿ ತಿಂಗಳ ಬೋರ್ಡ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಅದನ್ನು ನೀವು ನೀಟಾಗಿ ಬರ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಡಿ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಏನಾಗ್ ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಓದ್ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಇದ್ರ ಫ್ಲೋ ಚಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ನಿಮಗೆ ಸೊ ಮೌತ್ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿದೆಯಪ್ಪ ಅಪರ್ ಲಿಪ್ ಲೋಯರ್ ಲಿಪ್ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಎರಡು ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಏನೋ ಬಕಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟಿ ಮೌತ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇರೋದು ಬಕಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟಿ ಬಕಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟಿ ಏನಿದೆ ಅಪ್ಪರ್ ಜಾ ಲೋಯರ್ ಜಾ ತ್ರೀ ಪ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲೆಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಅಪ್ಪರ್ ಜಾ ಲೋಯರ್ ಜಾ ಮೇಲೆ ಟೀತ್ ಸೊ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ಫ್ಲೋ ಚಾರ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ಈಸಿ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಟು ರೀಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಹೌದಾ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೇಳಿದ್ದು yes sir aita yes sir others yes sir okay so shall we proceed now yes sir yes sir mouth artha madkondidivi upper lip artha madkondidivi lower lip artha madkondidivi simultaneously <coughs> just a minute so you go let us try to understand about the buccal cavity upper jaw lower jaw the teeth you know functions of teeth yeah you know why should we have a teeth all these things we'll try to understand okay fine so let's go with that part i'm going to this part <coughs> so you go every one of you are having presence of teeth in your buccal cavity how that yes sir yes sir okay. yes what is the role of teeth in your digestion act yeah to digest the food exactly so the moment you take the food the food is not in the condition of directly swallowing it so that it is in a complex form it needs to be chewed properly or what we call it as in the scientific term 
mastication mastication ana channa agulu adanna nungalu so every time whenever you are consuming food the first thing the moment you do means whenever the food is taken into the mouth you again madthira without your knowledge you will start biting it hoda yes or no yes yes you will start chewing it you will start biting all these things will do so that is the most important thing about the teeth so teeth is a hard crystalline structure because it is made up of calcium carbonates and other various types of other components are also present so it is a hard structure present in the upper jaw as well as the lower jaw so which is mainly responsible for the activity of what i call it as mastication of the food so p then what i said first important thing is it helps in mastication of food it is going to help in mastication of food mastication andre eno chewing of the food anta artha gottidya yes yes sir so you are the teeth or the tooth set up whatever we are going to have in the human body there are two pairs of teeth in our lifetime andre yerdu set of teeth baruthe namage body na one we call it as milk teeth another is permanent teeth howda yes sir yes, sir so new chikka makkalagi irbekadre first hall bedidirutte adan mele solpa varshagal adan mele adu biddogutte matte hosa hall varutte howda everybody agree with this so that yes. is what it is considered to be as two types one we call it as milk teeth and we have permanent teeth so we have milk teeth and we have permanent teeth so as we are going to have two sets of teeth in our lifetime it is considered to be as so this two types of sets of teeth as it is present in our lifetime we call this condition as diphyodont and the creativity we call this as diphyodont and the creativity please make a note of that one it is called diphyodont dai antandre yerdu yerdu set of teeth so it is diphyodont milk teeth permanent teeth okay na yes sir barkondra yes sir okay so here next <clears throat> the teeth is present in the upper jaw lower jaw in a specific sockets teeth ella adu yenappa andre one socket ge attach agirudu howda yes or no lock and key mechanism tar hingo kachkondirudu howda everybody agree with that yes sir yeah so as the teeth is going to be present in the sockets they are called as thecodont and the kritini we call this as thecodont so one is diphyodont diphyodont and then two sets of two thecodont present in sockets it is present in sockets so hagagi idana thecodont and the kritini okay na yes sir okay next whenever you take the teeth the teeth are going to have four types of teeth in our body nimu gotirbodu incisors canines premolars molars howda yes sir yes sir hello 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 yes, yes sir. sir yes sir yes sir so we are able to see four different types of teeth in our body so as it is four different types it is considered to be as heterodont so diphyodont because we are having two sets of teeth thecodont because it is present in socket heterodont because we are having four types yaar the four types so we will try to understand first one incisor then second is called as canine third is 
premolar and fourth is considered to be as molar. So teeth are the first thing. So teeth is mainly responsible for the mastication of the food. And we are having two sets of teeth. It is diphionic. Milk teeth permanent. Teeth or not, because the teeth are present in sockets of the upper jaw and lower jaw. Then heading of a dot because there are four types. Incisor, canine, premolar, molar. Hope this is clear to everybody. Arta Ita? Yes, sir. Very yes, good. Sir. Yes, sir. English or Tumba Mata with the problem of Kidia, Kanada Tumba explain Marba Kagata, they will to Haley Rana. Okay. Yaragan and Tumba English or Martha with the problem of Kidia? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. No. Barkondra? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mundu Kogana? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Great. So, Ida, let us now try. I will be running this part. Ida, let's try to understand. Milk teeth. Here yeah, is the milk teeth. What are all the types of teeth which are going to be present in milk teeth? Adana. So, we go with this milk teeth. So, milk teeth. All small children will be having milk teeth. They will be having presence of incisors. First one, they will be having incisors. Second, they have canine. And then third, they have molars. So small children, they don't have premolars. They are going to have only molars. Is that clear to everybody? Okay. So, yesterday, you know, incisors are considered to be as totally eight in a number. How that? Male get an alaku, kel get an alaku. So, it will be eight incisors. Then, canines. So, there will be presence of two canines on the upper jaw, two canines on the lower jaw, which makes it as totally four. Eight plus four is taito. 200. Next, molars. We are able to see again molars. Two molars in the right, two molars in the left upper jaw. So total making as two plus two four. Same thing happens happens even in the lower jaw also. Lower jaw will be having two molars in the left in the right part and two molars in the left part. So two plus two four, four plus four eight. So it's type of eight. So total is type of 8 plus 4, 12 plus 8, 20. So 20 teeth is going to be present. So dental formula. So I think a dental formula. Dental formula. So dental formula very better. Half part matra considered. Means if you're taking right, means upper jaw and lower jaw. Right part, left part. So this is one part, this is one part. So dental formula. Incisors on the right part will be presence of two. Then we'll be having canines. Canines is one. Molar. Molar is two. How that? Correct. One the journal, one part. So, Mundagade, Yerado, Andre, either hint on If you take the dental formula, either upper jar at that, the lower jar at that, I will be considering only this half. So, you need the idea, you need the idea. So, you need first Yerado incisor. One the canine, Yerado molars. Arthai Tan Helido? Yes, sir. Okay. So, same way. I will write it in the lower jaw. Lower jaw, what I said, two incisors, one canine, two molars. So two, one, two. 
premolar something critically that is not present so you can represent that as zero adu illa it is not present so ivaga idu enna aitu idu nen maatini what i will do is whatever we are going to have like this i will multiply this with two yake two multiply andre both upper and lower will be multiplying it with two because we have taken only one part of it into two andre one two one two. total aga maatana can i tell the total number is 20 enabada ilode 2 plus 1 3 3 plus 2 ಆಯ್ತಾ ಬರ್ದಿಟ್ಟು ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ 1 ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಸರ್ 1 ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಓಕೆ can i proceed yes sir okay so again permanent teeth also will be having incisors so incisors is to it will be eight in number so it is going to be eight in number then we are going to have permanent teeth also has presence of canine canine will also be four in the number okay it will be four in number then at the same time there will be presence of what you call it as the premolars so there will be presence of premolars so premolars is to the other one two so huh? Premolars will be. Well, first two molars are there. Now the premolars are there. So premolars are there. Correct. So with respect to premolars. We will be having totally the total premolars are also considered to be as a and molars. Molars is for that. Molars will increase in number, which will become as totally twelve. Let's try to write down. Eight plus four twelve. Twelve plus two twelve. Twenty-four. Twenty-four plus eight. Let's try to. Mr. Tom. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. So permanent teeth will be having thirty-two teeth. Other than that, we will try to understand the dental formula. Is 
So in case of the dental formula, again, one side, one side there, but the other three, incisors will be two, upper jaw two, canines will be one. Then we have here premolar formula. So premolars are the present time, not the daughter of the other. So premolars will be considered to be as two on one side, and molars will be three on one side. So we are like that. Same way, lower jaw it will be two, one, two, three. So I start now. Two plus one, three. Three plus two, five. Five plus three. I start there. Eight. So into two, what are they start there? Eight into two is sixteen. So sixteen teeth are present on the upper jaw. Same way, sixteen teeth are present on the lower jaw, which makes the complete count as thirty-two. Hold on. Yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. This is the dental formula of the milk teeth. This is the dental formula of the permanent teeth. Hope this is clear to everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please make a note of this one. Yes, sir. Completed, sir. Yeah. Others have you completed? Yes, sir. Okay. So yes, today class, just to brief up, I will not continue for that. I will just brief up what what we have done today. So next part, we have to understand about tongue. Then we have to understand about salivary glands. Then we have to understand about esophagus. All over there. So before that, just let's brief up things what we have done today. We understood about the activity of digestion in amoeba, how the nutrition and digestion in amoeba. Yes, so there we understood about how the amoeba is going to procure the food by phagocyte process with the help of pseudopodia. That we understood, and the digestion activity takes place in the food vacuum. So once the digestion takes place, unwanted food molecules will be thrown out by the rupturing of the cell membrane. That we understood. Then we came with respect to the nutrition in human being. We started understanding this. So in today's class of nutrition in human beings, we understood human being is holozoic mode of nutrition, and he has presence of a buck means a uh, elementary canal digestive system consisting of elementary canal starting from mouth to anus, which is a tube-like structure around nine meters in long. And that mouth is going to be connected first to the buccal cavity, buccal cavity to the esophagus, esophagus to stomach, stomach to the small intestine, small intestine to large intestine, large intestine to the anus. So small intestine has three parts in it, which are all those duodenum, jejunum, ileum, and then large intestine is going to have cecum, colon, rectum, as well as the last part is anus. So we understood what is mouth. Mouth consists of upper lip and as well as the lower lip connected to the buccal cavity. Buccal cavity will be having presence of upper jaw, lower jaw, along with the teeth present in it, and also the part of the tongue which is present in it. Along with that, the buccal cavity also is going to have three sets or three pairs of salivary glands. So teeth will be. We understood that. It is going to have. It is mainly responsible for the mastication of the food, and the teeth are present as two sets in the human body: milk teeth, permanent teeth. That's why it is called as diphyodont. And as the teeth is going to be present in the sockets, it is considered to be as thecodont. There are four types of teeth, hence it is heterodont. Then milk teeth. There are twenty in number. Incisors eight, canines four, molars eight. So what is the dental formula? We have understood. Same way, permanent teeth, incisors eight, canines four, premolars eight, molars twelve. Okay, now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any other doubt? Anybody? No, sir. No, sir. So, इधो इवत्तीन दो मार रहे दो अर्था के लिए इधो बनो. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So your new मार बे काई रहे दो मने नली कुतु वोध बे. ओद वेरी फस्ट ऐन टेक्स्ट बुक्त ओद 
ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ಬುಕ್ ಓದ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಾ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ನಾನು ಕೊಟ್ಟಿರುವಂತಹ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ಬೋರ್ಡ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಬರೆದಿರುವಂತಹ ಫ್ಲೋ ಚಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ನ ನೀವು ರೆಫರ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ನೀವು ಓದ್ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಈಸಿ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ನೋಡಿ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಬಯಾಲಜಿ ಏನಿದೆ ಟೆಂತ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟೆಪಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಪಿ ಯುಸ್ ನೀವು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಪಿ ಯುಸ್ ನಲ್ಲೂ ಈ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಓದ್ತೀರಾ ಫೋಟೋ ಸಿಂಥಸಿಸ್ ಓದ್ತೀರಾ ಅಮೀಬಾ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಷನ್ ಓದ್ತೀರಾ ಮತ್ತೆ ಇದನ್ನು ಓದ್ತೀರಾ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಷನ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ಓದ್ತೀರಾ ಮತ್ತೆ ಇದೇ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಯಾವ್ದು ಬರುತ್ತೆ ರೆಸ್ಪಿರೇಷನ್ ಅದನ್ನು ಓದ್ತೀರಾ ಸರ್ಕ್ಯುಲೇಷನ್ ಓದ್ತೀರಾ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೀಷನ್ ಓದ್ತೀರಾ ಆದ್ರೆ ಇದು ಏನು ಓದ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರೆ ಇದು ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಹೈಯರ್ ವರ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಲರ್ನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಪಿ ಯು ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಲೆವೆನ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಅಪ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಈ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ನೀವೇನು ಓದ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಾ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಗಮನ ಇಟ್ಟು ನೀವು ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಓದಿದ್ರೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ತೆಗಿದ್ರೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಸಿಲೆಬಸ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಸಿಲೆಬಸ್ ಅಂತ ನೀವು ತಗೊಂಡಾಗ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿಮಮ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಬರೋದು ಬಯಾಲಜಿ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಮಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಮತ್ತೆ ಫಿಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಬಹಳ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಇದೆ ಸೊ ಗಿವ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಯಾಲಜಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಕೋರಿಂಗ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಟು ಎವ್ರಿ ಬಡಿ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಮೀಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಮೈ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಆನ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟರ್ಡೆ ಓಕೆ ಟ್ಯೂಸ್ಡೆ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟರ್ಡೆ ಎವ್ರಿ ವೀಕ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಫೈನ್ ವಿತ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಬಡಿ ಬಾಯ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಟಾಟಾ ಬಾಯ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಸರ್